Hi there everybody and welcome to lesson number eight, the final lesson in our series. We have built up an extensive knowledge of circuits, potential difference, currents and resistance. And I want to take this knowledge now and apply it to various electrical problems. This helps us analyze circuits and to understand such things as to why it is dangerous to couple two or three banks of multiplugs to one electrical supply point in your home. Let us begin by doing some relatively simple problems to start and use these to warm up so that we can solve some more challenging problems by the end of the lesson. You will benefit by working through these with me, so have a calculator, something to write with and a piece of paper at hand. Here is a circuit diagram which has some values which are missing and some values which are filled in for you. We have to determine the missing values, namely R1, V2, A2, V3 and R3. We are looking for values of R, V and I. Therefore we need to use the equation that links these quantities, namely V is equal to I times R. Let's start at the positive terminal of the battery and follow the path of the current as it goes through R1 and through the ammeter. The current is 10 amperes. Now how do we know that? Well the reading on the ammeter will tell us this. So 10 amperes must also be going through the 0, 0,4 ohm resistor and be the reading on ammeter A2. Therefore if 10 amperes is being read in that part of the circuit then 10 amperes must also be read at this part of the circuit. So the reading on A2 is 10 amperes. Well, we've already solved one part of the problem. Let's continue going around the circuit. 10 amperes passes through the resistor R3 and back to the battery. Now that we know this information, we are ready to start calculating. Let's start by finding out the resistance of R1. Well, what information do we know about R1? Well, we know that the potential difference across R1 is equal to 4 volts and that the current that passes through R1 is equal to 10 amperes. Let's write down our equation. V is equal to I times R. We're looking to solve for R, so therefore let's make R the subject of the formula. So R will equal V divided by I. We substitute in our values, V is equal to 4 volts, I is equal to 10 amperes, 4 divided by 10 is equal to 0, 0,4 ohms. Therefore we can see that the resistance of R1 is equal to 0, 0,4 ohms. Now let's continue with our calculations. This time we will calculate the value of the voltmeter V2. Again, let's write down the information we know. We know that the resistance of the resistor is equal to 0, 0,4 ohms. We know that the current that passes through the resistor is equal to 10 amperes. We write down our equation, V is equal to I times R. Let's substitute in the values. I through the resistor is 10 amperes. The resistance is 0, 0,4 ohms. 10 amperes multiplied by 0, 0,4 ohms is going to give us a value of 4 volts. Therefore, we can say that V2 is equal to 4 volts. Now let's move on to our last resistor, R3. Now this problem is a little bit more interesting. Not only do we not know the value of R3, but we also don't know the value of V3, the potential difference across it. But let's think about this very carefully. What do you know about the rules that govern potential difference in a series circuit? Let's go back to our diagram. The potential difference divides a series circuit. The sum of the potential difference across each resistor equals the potential difference across the terminals of the battery. So if we know that, we can write down our formula that the total potential difference will equal V1 plus V2 plus V3. 
Let's substitute in our values. The total potential difference is 13 volts. V1 is measured at 4 volts. V2 we calculated previously also to be 4 volts. And V3 is my unknown. Let's rearrange the equation to calculate V3. V3 is therefore equal to 13 volts minus 4 volts minus 4 volts. And therefore, V3, the value of the potential difference across resistor R3, is equal to 13 minus 4 minus 4 is equal to 5 volts. And knowing this, the last calculation becomes quite simple. If we take our equation V is equal to I times R and rearrange it to make R the subject of the formula, R is equal to V over I, we can substitute in our values. V3 we now know is 5 volts. The current we know is 10 amperes. Therefore, 5 divided by 10, the resistance of R3 is 0, 0,5 ohms. Let's try another circuit problem. This one is a bit more difficult, so please pay close attention. Resistor R1 is connected in series with two resistors, R2 and R3, which are in parallel with each other. Find the following. A, the potential difference V3 across the parallel part of the circuit. B, the reading on ammeter A2. C, the reading on ammeter A1. D, the potential difference V1 across R1. And lastly, E, the resistance of R1. Now, what are the rules about potential difference in a parallel circuit? Well, the potential difference across a parallel circuit is the same as the potential difference across each branch in that circuit. Let's have a look at our problem. We are asked to calculate the potential difference V3 across the parallel part of the circuit. Now, we know that the potential difference across R2 will be the same as the potential difference across R3, which will be the same as the potential difference across the circuit. So let's use R3 because we have some information that we can work with. We know that the value of R3 is equal to 1 ohm. The current passing through R3 is equal to 1 ampere. Therefore, if we apply the equation V is equal to I times R, the potential difference across R3 will be 1 ampere multiplied by 1 ohm is equal to 1 volt. Therefore, by our rules of parallel circuitry, V3 must also equal 1 volt. Now we can find the current through R2. In other words, calculate the value on the ammeter A2. We know that the potential difference across R2 will be 1 volt. And that the resistance of R2 is equal to 4 ohms. Therefore, we can now calculate the current. We know that V is equal to I times R. Let's make I the subject of the formula. So I is equal to V divided by R. Substitute in our values 1 volt divided by 4 ohms. And therefore, my current is equal to 0, 0,25 amperes. So the reading on ammeter A2 will be 0, 0,25 amperes. To calculate the value on the ammeter A1, we have to use another rule of parallel circuitry. Let's go back to our problem. Now, ammeter A1 will measure the total current in the electrical circuit. But according to our parallel circuit rules, the current will split as it passes through R2 and R3. Therefore, the total current in the circuit must be equal to the current that passes through R2 plus the current that passes through R3. Let's substitute in these values. We've recently calculated that the current through R2 is 0, 0,25 amperes. The current through R3 is given as 1 ampere. 0, 0,25 plus 1 will give us a value of 1,25 amperes. That means now that the reading on ammeter A1 must equal 1,25 amperes. And now for part D, the potential difference V1 across resistor R1. 
The potential difference across R1 can be found by looking at the potential difference across the parallel part, which is V3, and across the terminals of the battery. In other words, the total potential difference applied by the battery will be equal to V1 plus V3. To calculate V1, we rearrange the formula. V1 is equal to V total minus V3. V total is equal to 5 volts, which is given. Minus the 1 volt, which we calculated earlier, gives us a reading of 4 volts. And therefore, V1 will equal 4 volts. And finally, we can calculate the resistance of R1. Well, the potential difference across R1 is equal to 4 volts. The current passing through R1 will be equal to 1,25 amperes. And therefore, writing down V is equal to I times R. Rearranging to make R the subject of the formula, R is equal to V divided by I. Substituting our values in 4 volts divided by 1,25 amperes gives us a reading for R1 of 2,4 ohms. We have solved quite a few complicated problems today. It is always good to set yourself a challenge and keep practicing these more difficult problems and not concentrate on the straightforward easy ones. By doing this, you'll be able to tackle any problem come test or exam time. Thank you for joining me. I will see you soon. Goodbye for now.